morning, everyone. This is Osiris from the Cover City News. On Entertainment, Stones in the Car, we blog and your weekly show host for 15 minutes. I got up early, people out here, to come out and hang out with Brandy Dean, who set up this for us. Thank you so much. And we have the pleasure of talking to Mark Geyer, who is the manager, Ryan the Ryan program manager. Now, for those of you that don't know about the Orion, the Orion is doing a test today, I think, of how it's going to look like when they actually go up to Mars. Is that correct? Basically, it's a, it's the test of the last piece of one of these missions where uh -huh. the crew has now landed on the water. Wow. And the Navy is working with us to how to recover the capsule and the crew. Oh, okay, so they're going to show you how the Navy's going to do their job. Correct. And so what does that involve when they recover a capsule? So the this is the capsule behind us. It's going to be sitting in the water. It's fairly There's big. the capsule. Wow, you it know, is It's big. about five meters across. But it's very buoyant, right? Right. So it's 20,000 pounds, but still it's, it bobs Pretty around light, a lot yeah. in the water. So this ship, this uh, the Navy has these ships called well deck ships that they use for special forces and for the Marines. Uh -huh. And they actually flood this deck, and they can launch ships out the back of it. Wow. So we're going to kind of do the reverse. We'll flood this deck and we'll pull the capsule in uh -huh. and set it down gently and then the crew can get out on the dry deck. That's really the technique. Oh, so wow. we working with the Navy about how to do that. The capsule behaves differently than the craft they're used to running in here like the hovercraft and other things because it doesn't have an engine on it. So we actually have Navy specialists along the sides and they have the ropes. We have a winch that pulls it in. So all this test is see how to do that safely. And, and now, is are there any special like requirements that someone has to have to be one of the people that either tests or one of the people that make sure that the people get off safe and that everything's okay after their departure? So we have um, we have engineers that understand how the capsule is designed. So we know what the loads. You know, you can pull on, pull on the attachments and that kind of stuff. So you got to have engineering guys who know how to do that. We have we have specialists who understand the. The heat shield when it comes back in because we're trying to protect that. We want to lose. What do you mean by the heat shield from the sun or? Basically, when you're coming back in from the moon or from uh -huh. Mars, we're going to use oh, the, the atmosphere. transition from the atmosphere. Exactly, we're going to use the atmosphere to slow us down, uh -huh. but it heats up a lot. Like the heat shield to get about 4,000 degrees. Yeah. So you got to have material on there that can kind of burn off and still keep the crew and the and the structure cool enough. Oh, so wow. So we want to see how it works. That's part of a big part of this test we're doing uh -huh. in December. Now, how long did the test go? And I know the media was specifically invited out today for Navy Days. It is Navy Days. <laughs> and how long is this going to go on? It started at 6 this morning? Yeah, for the Navy, my understanding, the Navy Days uh, event goes through the weekend where they'll let people come on board and see different Oh, okay, but the general public. Correct. But, yeah. In different parts. There's some students coming on today oh, and tomorrow. Oh, wow. Where are the students from? The local colleges here? Yes, or? and I think high schools and elementary. Okay, and then will you guys be around that whole time or just no, this morning? No, but the astronaut, Nicole Stott, will be here. Oh, wow. Is the astronaut here? Yes, she's here. Oh, he, she's okay. Right up there. Well, and it's a girl. Yeah. Wow, we have a female astronaut. What's we your name again? Oh, wow. nobody knows that. <laughs> so what is, what is your exact function? What is it that you have to do to make sure this operation runs smoothly? Yeah, so the pro I'm the program manager for this part of the system, the Orion system. Uh -huh. So my job is... We have a team of experts at NASA. We have a contract with Lockheed Martin. Uh, my job is to make sure that we design it right, we build it right, it shows up on time and it works. Okay. So I just had a chance to come out here and see how the recovery team is doing. And how are they doing? Splendid? Oh, they did it. Well, they did a terrific job. We're down to the last few things that we're mm -hmm. trying to make sure we got right. What, did, what are those last few things? Um, the heat shield, like I mentioned, is a very sensitive uh, and difficult design. So when we get it home, my engineers want to look at it, put their eyes on it, and see how it behaves. See if they see anything weird with mm. the behavior of the heat shield and the structure. Oh, okay. So we want to make sure it doesn't get damaged on recovery. You don't want it to come in and slam on this deck. Well, so no, we've got some bumpers we put on the floor, and these guys are controlling it, so they put it down. So we're so working the details on how to get that So down. is the, how do they open up the ship to let it? It's got to come up from the water. Yes, so they lower, this, lower the gate in the back, and uh -huh. then they actually ballast, they bring water in the the ship to lower the, the deck and actually floods the deck about six to eight feet. This deck? So this would be filled in wa with Correct. water. Whoa. Correct. So how, 
Why did you guys pick the port of Los Angeles to do it in? Is that just the general area that these kind of things happen? or We, we needed this kind of a ship. Actually, I believe this ship is based in San Diego. Um, and one of the other ones we worked with was. And I think it's up here specifically for the Navy Days event. Uh, wow, okay. Yeah. So, what caused you to get involved? How did you get involved? And how did you get into all of this? <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah, when I was a kid, I watched Neil Armstrong walk on the moon, right? I remember that. I was, oh, you're still a kid. I what do you mean, when you were just a kid? No, 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 we're all kids. A lot kid or more of a kid. So that was a lot of fun, and I got a lot of, very excited about it. I've been at NASA since, though. I did a lot of other things first, but I came to NASA in 1990. Okay. I worked on Space Station for quite a while. All right, so if anyone that's planning to come and see this whole thing, what would you tell them about what they can expect to see, how they can expect things to roll out here? Well, I can't, I can't, I'm not a good spokesman for the overall Navy Days mm -hmm. event, because I know yeah. there's a lot more than Orion, yeah. but when you come, No, I mean for the, for yeah, involving the Orion. For Orion, you're going to see this capsule, this test article. There it is. You're going to see the well deck, how big it is, what it's like to be inside this well deck, and get a sense for how big it is. How big Orion is. Mm -hmm. and you're going to see a piece of. Uh, how big is Orion? What is the size of the capsule? So it's about it's about five meters across. Um, and weighs about so that's it. We're looking at it right there. Okay. And it's about twenty thousand pounds. Okay. okay. Yeah, you did you say. Can carry that. about four to six people on the inside. Okay. Yeah. And all of those people, what would happen if something were to go wrong? How would those people be protected? So that's a great question. When you go deep space, so you go around the moon, you could be seven days away from Earth. So, <laughs> I mean, just the thought of leaving, the, like, yeah. oh my God. Right, and you're out in a vacuum. Whoa! You know, because you see all the movies like Gravity and all those kind of movies. <laughs> so, but, but but is it really a dangerous thing or, yeah. or it's pretty... Well, so we can't survive in a vacuum and the temperatures are in the shadow are extremely cold. Mm. So, and there's things like radiation in space. Yeah. Uh, both just in the ambient and also from the sun. Uh, there's also uh, micro meteorites and orbital debris in certain areas that can penetrate spacecraft and space suits. So you gotta make a spacecraft that can protect the crew from against all those things. What do they have in case something goes wrong with the spacecraft itself? Do they have special kind of clothing on that will protect them up until a certain time till the rescue team gets there? What happens? Well, for a capsule like this, a system like this, you can't be hoping somebody's going to come get you. You've got to protect the crew and get them home. Okay. So, for example, you can imagine one of the worst things you could do is your cabin depresses, and basically it's not holding pressure, so the cabin goes to a vacuum. Well, the crew has suits, pressure suits they can wear, and okay. Orion's design where we can keep them in their suits for 140 hours. Okay, so, so case, they're... Get them all the way home. Then so they can get back home if something happens out right. there. So we have and how? What is their lifeline? How are are they connected to? It's like an umbilical. Something, so it's like yeah. Umbilical back to the so that is true place. that there has to be a lifeline or connection somewhere right. to keep them from just bubbling off in, there into the right. ozone. Right. the pressure, gives them the oxygen, gets rid of the carbon dioxide, all those kind of things. That's fantastic. And they can eat through it too. You know, but it's an emergency. Mm -hmm. And we have emergency backup. You have the normal computers, then you have yeah. a computer that, in case all your computers go out can run all the, all the main functions. Okay, so it's a backup, like a main, a mother computer. Basically. Oh, that's for awesome. The simple functions that, for the most critical functions, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And then in a, in a big radiation event, like this, we have a solar flare or something. Yes, it turns what out would with happen? The, with the food and the water that we have on board and the other equipment, they can make kind of a shelter around where the seats are. Like a are, cubby down in there. And then pile the stuff around them and survive Protect these themselves. one or two day events. That is amazing because a lot of people don't know. They're like, oh my gosh, if they get lost out there. Now, one more question. Then we're going to go see the girl astronaut, right? <laughs> one more question. What kind of menu um, do they prepare for the guys? Do they have to have a, a meat diet or can they be vegetarians or... What, what kind of menu do they make so they don't get sick and you know they don't have anywhere to go if yeah. something happens? So yeah, what that's a really good point. There's a certain amount we have to plan for a certain amount of liquid per day for every crew member. What kind of liquid? Just regular liquid, we'll or start is with it? water, basically okay. water. Uh -huh. And then there has a certain amount of calories and types of calories, just like so. It's very well planned because some of these uh, operations, like an EVA, is it, it, a very strenuous event, so they have to count for that. Mm -hmm. So there's actually. The crew gets to select within some range, and a vegetarian is allowed within okay. some range, the kind of meals they want. And then those are prepared on the ground, and then we pack them 
and then they actually add water in the cabin to kind of to, to make it more of a meal. They heat so it up. not like the meals we see on Star Trek where they push the button <laughs> and the, and the meal opens. comes down and the door opens <laughs> and you just kind of select what you want. Yeah, it's not, not quite yet. that not quite sophisticated. Yeah, yeah. So it's been really a pleasure talking to you. Now we want to go, everybody, and talk to you. what is the young lady's name again? Goldstein. This is Goldstein. Nicole Stodd. Nicole Stodd. S T O D D. Well, uh, I'm, let's go. Yeah. Let's follow. I'm going to follow you around. We're just going to. Okay, we're inside of the ship. Mark is walking ahead of me. The rest of the guys are standing around. Can I just get a couple of you guys to say something about why you're here? So this whole operation recovery is his responsibility. Okay, and your name again? This is the guy who does the rocket. Your name is? Yes, I'm Mike Boulder. Hey, Mike Boulder. Boulder, yeah. Boulder. I'm the program manager for the ground systems development and operations. And what happens on the grounds? That's all right. So I'm the ground person. So I'm at the Kennedy Space Center. Okay. So we're, we're responsible for preparing the launch center. Um, so what we're doing at Kennedy right now is we're very busy preparing all of our infrastructure. So, um, for instance, we're working on a, on a launch pad. We're modifying the shuttle launch pad. which used to have a tower. We're taking the tower down. We now have a clean pad. Um, and we're building a mobile launcher, which will be the launch platform and the launch tower, which provides all the ground systems connectivity um, mm -hmm. to the rocket. So when they need propellants, when they need power, when they need calm. You're the um, guy that takes the guy care of that, right, that provides it to the spacecraft and to the launch vehicle. That's so interesting. How long have you been doing this? I know Mark said he's been in it for a while. I've been on this particular program for a year and a half. I've been with NASA for 25, 21 minutes. I always wanted to do something with NASA, but you know you're like, okay. That's so, live for you. Uh, Go yeah, ahead. Really. Yeah, so, um Okay, I didn't have it on. Say it again. Oh. Hey. Hi, I'm Good Lieutenant morning. Michelle Gagno. I'm the ship's doctor. And so what does that involve, being a ship's doctor? Well, it involves the care of at least 420 sailors. Woo! Current, um, By yourself? Do you have a staff? I do have a staff. How, how big is the staff? My department is 17 personnel. Mm -hmm. I have two officers, myself, and then I also have a dental officer. Um, and then with um, my enlisted sailors, I have some specialized um, sailors too. I have surgical tech, a pharmacy tech, a laboratory tech x-ray tech um, and a pre med tech now look at this woman in here people out here for you girls out there saying that women can't do this and do this not only is she on the ship she's the head person in charge head charge can you imagine what kind of background and what kind of education did you have to have in order to get this kind of cool position this cool position so i'm actually from texas I am too. All these Texas people. I don't dare say. <laughs> Go ahead. So I did my undergrad at University of Texas in Austin. Okay. And I went to medical school at Texas A&M University. Oh. So after that, Texas I joined the Navy. Yep. And um, did a surgical internship at Naval Medical Center San Diego. Uh huh. And after my surgical internship, I got the billet here on the USS Anchorage, and I've been the provider ever since. Oh, so you've been here how long? Just over a year now. Okay, and you like it. I can tell you're smiling. Like you got it. a big smile this on your face. It's a wonderful place to practice. Yeah. Well, do you guys get off the ship? Are you able to go places and go out and be on leave? Or We do. So while the ship's in port, the majority of sailors actually live off the ship. Mm -hmm. um, so people have their families and homes and things that they can um, go to when you're not at work. Right. Um, when the ship goes underway out at sea, everyone's on the ship. Everyone lives on the ship. It's really important to have that medical care because... Lord knows what could happen in the middle of the ocean. That's true. That's true. Now, are you allowed to go when you when they go out? Do you go out with them or? I the ship cannot move without me not being present. Okay. I have oh. to be present when the ship. Goes you out to physically sea. have to be here. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Do you ever when you get sick? What? Who takes care of you? We haven't crossed that bridge yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I imagine the game plan is if I already get sick and have to be off the ship. Um, you have a backup? They would have to get a different doctor from another ship who's mm -hmm. not out at sea to come fill in for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much yeah, for your welcome. time. Just wanted to get a short little sure. clip on you, let everybody know there are women on the job, even at the Navy, even on a ship. That's right. I'm going to need you to sing this one, anime. <laughs> you ready? We are talking.
talking to Pete Santos, who is with the Navy, of course, but what is your position in the Navy, Pete? What do you do? I'm the Command Master Chief for the USS Anchorage. Um, I'm here, we have 420, over 420 sailors, and I'm here for the um, morale and welfare of every enlisted person and officers on board the ship. I am the senior enlisted to the captain. Uh, basically, the heartbeat of the ship kind of runs through me, and I tell the captain where we have issues at, and what areas, what course we need to take to uh, remedy those issues. So, basically, um, there we go. We have various departments. We have eight departments on board, uh -huh. to include the Forest Service Medical. Right um, there. Yes. We have a, a deck department who's responsible for all the um, well deck operations for the amphibious vehicles that come in. We have engineering department who's responsible as far as you know, even the water we drink and ma maintaining the engines on the ship. Now, how long have you been been doing this? What it, how long have you been doing it in I've your been position? Navy for 27 years. Okay. And I've, been, I've been doing this for the last five years. Okay. So um, basically, what I do is just make sure the ship runs right. If somebody has some issues and they don't know how to take care of them, they come talk to me, and we get the important resources to take care of them and help them continue on life. So a lot of folks are young and uh, they're still trying to reach their maturity as far as being a grown up, and we help them get there. We have various resources available in this important to uh, take care of them. So kind of like putting them first and making sure we take care of them. If we put them first, then they can do for others. So it's, it's more of a positive approach to a lot of things and it's kind of helped them get on their life. So 15, 20 years from down the road when they live in a successful life, they can look on back on it and know where it is. And you know, have that wonderful enriching experience. Yes. Now, do you guys actually go out and recruit or people kind of call in all the time? Or We do what, have active How do you get... We don't recruit people, but uh, one tool we can use is the ship being in, in LA Navy days. Mm -hmm. People see what we do, so oh, okay. it, it's a remarkable uh, recruiting tool, so to speak. And uh, when they visit the good ship anchors, they can see some of the positive stuff we do. Because if you walk around the ship, we use positive quotes that we put, frame them up, and put them around the ship, and kind of have people think into you know further ahead and do things and stuff. So if, if that young kid or uh, male or female want to join 13, 14, which that was my case, they see the positive impact that it can have on them, and they're more willing to join. So, and we have great education opportunities. That's how I got my education. And even on active duty, we have folks that's taking college courses. That's, we have people on active duty who have PhDs, masters, and everything else through our continuing uh, education programs. So it's, it's an outstanding recruiting opportunity. So now, how many people of, may I ask you this, how many people of color actually have a chance to get in here? Is there a specific target for that? Or you just, like, if you're interested, anybody can join. There is no color line. There are no boundaries. You can be male, female, whatever. Nobody cares. Is that the case? That's, that's the case. We care, but we are very diversified Navy. So it doesn't matter what race, creed, color, background you are. The opportunity to be successful in life is there. You come with a good positive mental attitude, you'll get far. Me, myself, I'm from West Oakland, California. So West Oakland. And, you know, I look at my neighborhood now, they're doing a lot of positive things, but back then, 27 years ago, I was to get out of here to achieve something in life. And I took this opportunity and it made it been great for me and my family. So How did you get in, what, in, what caused you to become interested in NASA? NASA, NASA. Well, we, it wasn't it was the NASA involvement of trying to come back to some, some back uh, Vietnam era type, uh, how they used to recover. Oh, okay. The, uh, the, the manned vehicles or the uh -huh. unmanned vehicles. Uh -huh. We just here to support. You so you guys are supporting NASA? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's okay. <laughs> you guys are supporting NASA, so it's important that people know that you're a support system, you're not NASA itself. No. Okay, so itself. how many of you do, do, does NASA have to pull from? Are there a certain amount of people that are allocated for the program that goes out with them when they do something like Navy Days or no? I'm not quite sure as far as the total number, uh -huh. but it's, it's, it's used of various departments to assist. Mm -hmm. They provide most of the uh, expertise, and we're just here to help. Just here to, that's what Navy does. Ah, uh, I know. Uh, I love the Navy. Hopefully, the mission is successful in the yeah. future. So. Other than that, uh, NASA can probably give me more information on what they're doing and stuff with the, uh, the uh, thing that's in the well deck right now. So mm -hmm. We're just here to help, and we, we do, we've done pretty well with them and stuff, and we enjoy looking forward to seeing them in the future. Okay, well, I know you got to go, and you just so, he looks so handsome and debonair, ladies, in his all-white suit. It's nice to see men with some, some elegance around here. 
and it's been really nice. Thank you for taking your time. Good I know pleasure. it's really busy today. Thank you. It was Welcome. really nice. This is Pete Santos again. Your rank is? Command Master Chief, USS Anchorage. I'm the Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Captain. All right. He's got some stats. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Santos. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.